Is Assassin's Creed finally ready to be the huge hit of the holiday season once again? Man, based on today's shadows, reveals, and information, it sure looks like it. What's going on, everybody? It's Ghost Robo, and boom. Assassin's Creed Red is Assassin's Creed Shadows, and we have our two protagonists. We have our combat stealth split. We have our world. We have our history, and we have our new brand spanking awesome gameplay. So let me know in the comments down below if you are pumped for this one. Assassin's Creed has been a whirlwind, a roller coaster, if you will, as I love the early games, fell sort of off of it, came back for Origins, fell off again. Everybody has wanted this Feudal Japan Assassin's Creed for the entirety of the franchise. We're getting it. It has two protagonists, Yasuke and Naoe, and it looks amazing. I think the best thing that they've done right off the bat is that they've split the Assassin's Creed formula and they allow you to decide which one is more important to you. So Yasuke is a real historical figure. Uh, he was brought to Japan by a Jesuit missionary. He is the tough, bigger dude. He has the samurai suit. He has all sorts of combat-infused potential, big weapons, swords, and they really made sure that the new engine for Assassin's Creed uh, is able to handle a lot of destruction. Okay, so you can destroy and slice all sorts of things. At one point, IGN describes this as Fruit Ninja, but with everything, which, you know, maybe that's overhyping it a bit, but it still sounds very awesome that they have decided to create um, a much more intense combat focus uh, for at least Yasuke. Okay, so the Anvil engine uh, is now upgraded. It's ready to go for Assassin's Creed, and it can replicate all sorts of different damage, arrow damage, sword damage, hammer damage, etc. Now, that's directly contrasted by Naoe, who is your typical assassin. She's the hidden blade expert. She's the stealth expert, and they've upgraded the stealth as well. Like, this is where I think Assassin's Creed Shadows has a chance to be really, really great. Mirage took things back in a better direction, in my opinion, but not all the way there. I got lost in the franchise with, like, Valhalla having, like, a million and trillion and billion hours and all of it feeling a bit repetitive, and the RPG system's kind of just, like, going haywire, in my opinion, and getting too overboard and diluting the Assassin's fantasy that AC used to provide. But man, oh man, it seems like they've taken the best parts of Assassin's Creed, imported some Splinter Cell ideas, brought it to Japan, and that's where Naoe takes center stage. Now, before I get into that, they're pretty clear that you will have to play both characters at certain points. There's certain story missions that require you to play as Yasuke, require you to play as Naoe. That makes sense. But then in the open world, in the side missions, and even amongst individual missions, you can switch at free will, which I think is becoming very popular as something we saw with, you know, Peter Parker, Miles Morales, and Spider-Man 2, and now with Assassin's Creed. It, it harkens back to Unity, where there were two playable protagonists, um, and you're not just picking, like, oh, do you want to be the male character or the female character? You're getting to be both, which is pretty cool, and dictate your playthrough uh, more based on style preference, I think but also story preference, because Yasuke is a real historical figure, Naoe is an invented character, although her father is a real historical figure, so I think they're blending this all together beautifully. But back to the upgrades that Naoe's side of the systems will see, very, very nice. Okay, so we do have uh, a lot better lighting system that allows us to do things like snuff out candles, uh, we're going to have all sorts of different light sources that can work to your advantage, work against you. Uh, pretty darn sweet. There will be uh, people carrying lamps, so you take them out and then it darkens an area. Um, and you will have to work with this dynamic lighting system that also includes the sunlight and the moonlight uh, to find your sneaky spots. They really added physics-based parkour and a grappling hook so that you are able to move around nimbly, um, but in a way that they say is a little improbable, so that you will have to be careful because, you know, there's a bit of a danger. You can't just go grapple everywhere. It's not an instant grapple. It's a physics-based grapple, so that could lead to some mistakes, and you're going to have to be a skilled shinobi in order to, uh, you know, approach your target without being spotted. Um, I also like that they're adding the ability to just knock out enemies, so you can go through a pacifist playthrough. I don't know if you can entirely go through a pacifist playthrough, uh, but for the most part you can. They do mention that there's a heavy emphasis on your targets again. 
Um, and they're trying to have this be like where you can run into the targets without really meeting them or without really knowing them and that the targets are out there. So the game is still going to have linear set missions. Like they touch on these epic castles that are basically dungeons and like a whole level within itself and awesome humongous play place to go and dive in like a sandbox of stealth or combat. So of course there's going to be story things and, uh, you know, obviously you got to tie the characters together, bring them apart, tie them back together, but that some parts of the game will be what you want to do, how you want to approach it. And they even kind of tease different ways to take down the different targets, um, that there will be unique options. Some will be negative, some will be positive, some will be surprising. Um, and they're kind of trying to remove the obvious nature of the world. Synchronization points no longer put a ton of things on the map. Uh, they just are more vantage points to see what's out there and some locations will be highlighted, um, but it's not gonna give you like a map full of markers. And they mentioned how it's kind of harkening back to the Cult of Cosmos uh, web system of targets in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which this studio also made uh, back in 2018, where like, you got to go get these guys and it's up to you how you decide to do that and how you do that will also be influenced by the seasons which i think is another amazing addition to the game and another way that they're really trying to take advantage of next gen in more ways than just oh it's really really pretty and has a lot of you know the resolution is crisp i think this is the the task for many next gen developers is how do we take a game and merge the power of the visuals with gameplay to create something truly new. And the way that they're trying to do that, or at least one of the ways here in Assassin's Creed Shadows is via seasons. So the game is progressing through a you know set of seasons. Obviously, you got winter, you got spring, you got summer, you got fall. Certain missions will be forced to take place in certain seasons based on the historical uh, setting of said mission and the characters present. But then side missions and open world exploration will just be fluctuating. Uh, and how that comes into effect your gameplay and especially your stealth is that for example, in winter, icicles could be on the rooftops, and if you step too close, they're going to fall and alert the enemies. Or, you know, in the summer, you can wade through the water and approach a target, but in the winter, that's going to be a frozen pond, and you no longer can get beneath them. So I really, really love this idea of like, okay, wind will obscure your footsteps in the winter. Guards want to be in warm places, allowing you to go somewhere colder to get at them. Or in the, you know, the fall, you got leaves whirring and obscuring your footsteps. Like, very cool. It seems like it could be something that's like an on-off switch. And this is my skeptical Ubisoft brain coming in, which is like, okay, the winter has wind and the fall has leaves. And then in the summer and the spring, there's none of that. So it's like on, off, the, the ground, you know, your footsteps. But I hope it's a bit more dynamic than that. When they mention things like, okay, grass is going to grow in the spring to create new places to crouch behind. Or, you know, the guards are going to seek out warmth and so avoid colder areas of their, uh, you know, their, their walking path. That to me seems more dynamic than just on, off of like leaves and wind or no leaves and wind. Um, I also like the icicles thing. I think that sounds really cool. And I hope they're able to find a bunch of stealthy ways to force you to be a bit more aware. Now, the other side of the coin is the combat. How do they make that better? How do they emphasize Yasuke's role and how do they expand the combat? I guess IGN got to see a little bit of gameplay. They said it's definitely not like Sekiro levels of gameplay, but it does look like the combat is improved from uh, past Assassin's Creed's and one thing I like that they said was that they want like mini boss encounters to feel like duels and to feel very dynamic um, and more important more uh, not scripted necessarily but more like a, a set piece which I think is really cool and I think getting back to more set piece nature in AC is huge um, especially if it's something that can occur by your own volition like as you pick where to go as opposed to like oh you walk here and it hits a cutscene like the mini bosses to me seem like a way that combat could be really expanded and then, and then the destruction i guess those are the two ways that it seems they're really trying to take the combat side of things to the next level the world itself they said is going to be about the size of uh, egypt in assassin's creed origins they said like it feels bigger i'm not really you know just written word can't really explain to me why that should feel better bigger um but the castles sound very interesting. I think the castles being dungeons is another like smart idea and another way to really distinguish this Assassin's Creed from past Assassin's Creed's. 
the setting alone is going to do that for a lot of people, and the setting alone will be enough for many buyers to feel satisfied. Like, even if the game is the exact same, being able to play as Samurai and Shinobi is a fantasy that many AC fans wanted fulfilled. I guess the big question is, can this be the Assassin's Creed that takes things to the next level? Obviously, they have different studios, so their development time frame is scattered and staggered, but they did release AC Mirage last year, and while it was a bit more stealthy, it didn't really make as much of a dent as, you know, many Assassin's Creed's before it have. Uh, I think the cinematic trailer is very exciting and gets people super hyped, especially on the heels of the Shogun TV series, um, and just the, the hope that this can really be the best Assassin's Creed ever. They're kind of, they're primed, right? They have the ripe setting, the ripe characters, this idea of having a combat-focused character, a stealth-focused character, and you get to kind of switch inner you know, intermix between them as you move through. You've got the seasons, you've got upgraded combat, you've got upgraded stealth, you're taking a new upgraded engine to bring in better lighting and better destruction. Like, this is really impressive, but it's going to be the gameplay reveal that shows whether this Assassin's Creed is truly new and inventive or not. Uh, IGN noted when they were at Ubisoft Quebec that they were very wary to talk about what you actually do in the game, right? There's a lot of focus on the characters, Yasuke Noe, Noe, Naoe, a lot of focus on the history, a lot of focus on the world, and a lot of focus on the systems, but like the moment-to-moment -moment action, right? How this game takes place, they are hinting that it's more open, that there's still set missions and objectives, but you can kind of accomplish in your order. Is it just going to be another Assassin's Creed, though, with a fresh coat of paint? Is it going to feel like a truly new game, or at least an evolutionary take? I don't think we need to rewrite the wheel on Assassin's Creed, uh, but I think that we need it to feel like a big step forward, like a big upgrade. Being next-gen is very important to that current gen, I guess, at this point. Being a PS5, Xbox Series game is very important, and I think some of the changes they're making sound like they know what they're doing. Like, it sounds like between dynamic weather, uh, new stealth, and an opportunity to approach the game as you see fit with maybe some of the RPG stuff not being as in your face as before and allowing for a more free-form exploration, uh, I think this has a chance to be a huge hit again. I'm incredibly hopeful, but I'm going to wait till June 10th, which is Ubisoft Forward, and that's when we'll probably see a full deep dive into the gameplay and missions of Assassin's Creed Shadows. But right now, they're saying all the right things. Right now, it sounds very good. We'll have to wait and see what they can deliver. 2024 could shape up to be a massive year for Ubisoft. If Star Wars Outlaws is able to perform exceptionally well and be a Star Wars fantasy fulfillment title, epic. And if they're able to sort of divert from their typical Ubisoft Far Cry tower gameplay and map filling, you know, icons, great. If Assassin's Creed Shadows can continue that and dive us to a new era of AC into a better feeling AC, into a Splinter Cell meets samurai ac like a ghost of tsushima meets splinter cell like that could be the perfect holiday hit and those two games would elevate ubisoft's uh year financially and their portfolio recently into a new level that i feel they've maybe struggled to reach lately this is a huge moment for ubisoft a huge moment for assassin's creed and so far i say so good but let me know your take in the comments down below everybody thank you so much for watching until next time drink some hot chocolate and we will see you all later